Hello folks, how are we doing? And welcome back to another Zoom podcast here for the Escapade Show. And this is the first one that we're recording back in the studio, so it feels good to be back in. And today we're joined with our special guest, Darren McGarvey, aka Loki. Hello. How are we, Mr. McGarvey? Not bad, how are you, mate? Good, good. As I was saying there, fresh back in the studio, clean down, social distancing, and um, really, really buzzing to just catch up with yourself again, mate. What about yourself? How's uh, life been treating you the last couple of months? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm currently very, I'm socially distancing from my sense of gratitude for all of this. <laughs> if I'm honest, <laughs> we've been in, we, we, we went into lockdown a week before the lockdown actually became mandatory. So, um, I just taken it like sometimes a day at a time, sometimes an hour at a time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's but it's it's had some really good positives, you know. To be honest, uh, I don't think me and my my wife have had as much time with our children uh, as we've had, obviously, and uh, definitely seen the benefits of that for them and the benefits of that for us. Mm-hmm. And also, I guess like you can kind of in life you can become identified by the things that you do. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're, you're a podcaster or you're a writer or you're a musician or whatever it is your job is. And then you get told you can't work, you know, and, and, and your work stops. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're like, all right, well, what am I now? You know what I mean, right? Like, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a brother. Uh, <laughs> and you just have to kind of, I don't know, you have to find what what you really are you know what, what is the actual meaning of your life rather than a lot of these other things that sometimes become distractions i mean one of the reasons i sometimes get so frustrated in lockdown is because i can't work but there's nobody kicking my door down uh, you know what i mean like even if i'm over a deadline i'm not going to get sacked for it i'm not going to get in trouble for it it's me that wants to work it's mm-hmm. me, it's my sense that I should work and then me getting a sense of feeling deprived of that because of lockdown. Yeah. And you just, you create, you create obstacle courses for yourself mentally. So it's just been navigating that really day to day. But I mean, to me, it sounds like you're trying to reel that gratitude back in. <laughs> sounds like you've got the, the rod out and you're like, right, get back here because actually there is a lot to be grateful for. As you say, it, it, it could be a lot worse. And I think that's something that keeps me going most days. It could be a lot worse. Aye, but the, 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 I had, as, as anyone who follows me on Twitter will know, I just, I, I just like to put, I, 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 I express the whole scope of emotions on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I feel like if somebody, if I'm going to be bold enough to tell somebody my political opinion, mm-hmm. which is actually quite a personal thing to do, as much as people like to Very separate so. the two, mm-hmm. then I don't see why I shouldn't talk about you know, what kind of day I'm having, you know, like, am I, am I struggling with this or that, or what sort of, what's going on with my kids and stuff. I feel like if you're in the social media game as a social media user, Mm-hmm. then it's a bit silly to start putting restrictions on other people what they can and can't share or what should be appropriate because everybody on there has got an ego everybody on there is oversharing and everybody mm-hmm. on there has got a higher opinion of what they have to say than is probably necessary mm-hmm. and so we're all, we're all the same in that regard And so sometimes if I'm up late with my daughter and she's not sleeping when you're sitting by yourself you, 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 you might tweet more because it's a sense that you're with people. Do you know what I mean? Like, see, when you're up in the middle of the night and a kid's upset or won't sleep, it's quite bleak, you know? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I share things on there and then I'll get, like, uh, I'll get, like, you know, most people are nice and then you'll get some more stuff up a lip. People will be like, why are you sharing that? Why are you sharing about being a dad and all that? It's just like, well, why share anything? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, why yeah. share anything? I but mean, I just, I, I, find, I found the other day, I tweeted, I, I think I was tweeting, just like, I'm fed up making blackcurrant juice, right? <laughs> like, my son, every 15 minutes, he's just a blackcurrant juice machine. So anything you could conceivably try and do in the scope of a day will always be interrupted. This is including going to the toilet, right? Will be interrupted by a request from a four-year-old 
who is bordering on sociopathic in terms of brain development and just yeah. no having the, 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 the brain power to produce empathy for any longer than a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And then you do will be interrupted by that request. It just doesn't matter. I could literally climb a ladder to fix a light bulb, fall off of that ladder, break my spine, and in my dying final moments, my son would approach me and look deep into my eyes and he would say, Daddy, you forgot my black current. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or oh, Dad, can you get it's, me one? Aye. So it's just like moaning about that on Twitter. But then you always get somebody who's like, somebody messaged me to tweet me to tell me these horrific stories that they had worked with children and, you know, infant mortality and da da da. And I'm like, well, I don't need. I don't need that kind of perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't I looking for that. <laughs> I understand that I'm privileged. I understand that this is a kind of, that I'm bitching or I'm moaning or I'm not being grateful. I understand that as I'm saying the thing. For me to not say it when I feel like saying it is inauthentic in itself. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, it, it was like, you know, people hitting me with all sorts of things as if I had no sense of how lucky I was. And it's interesting because I think that shows a kind of a lack of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. When you can see that somebody is upset or stressed out, just ignore them, do you know what I mean? Or, or entertain them. I think like try to get your wee bit in and, and it's just like, that's that's a symptom of their lockdown stress, do you know what I mean? That's dead exactly it. Dead important to them that they that you know that, what they think, do you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, whatever. the thing is as well, like with social media, everybody now has a platform to have their own show, you know, mm. and and it's like, you know, even myself, I put some videos out the studio, we pump out a lot of content and stuff, and it's like then other times, as you say, if you're authentically feeling something, you might share something, and people that come to your page for a certain thing might be like, oh, why are you talking about that now? But inevitably, it's your page, you can do what you want with it. Aye, and you... you You've got people who follow you because that's who you are and that's the way you, you go. Like, I've got people who will follow me because of the book or because of music or because of stuff they've seen in the paper or because of my political views. But I think, like, the people who are there for the long haul who won't click the unfollow button the minute that you say something that they disagree with are the people who are actually invested or, 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 or who identify with you as an emotional being, do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. how you express yourself, your good days, your bad days. And, and uh, I just feel, if you're going to have a Twitter account and you're going to have a Facebook account, then you might as well just, just go for it, you know? And then, and then if you overshare or you say something you regret, you're in, a, you're in an honest learning process where you're like, actually, here are the points where I need to kind of rein this in a bit. Because mm -hmm. if you're just taking other people's advice, you don't really, I don't think you learn very well from you're just advice. You're regurgitating, aren't you? I find I draw on people's advice retroactively once I've made the mistake that they were trying to advise me against. You know, mm -hmm. you go back and you go, oh, right, so that's what they meant when they said da 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 da. And then the advice comes into play more because I've got the experience of making the mistake. Um, so I, social media, man, it's, it, it's good and it's bad. It's been good for getting information, but it's on a, for me on a personal level, you know, I've found it difficult seeing a lot of people that I know and I respect. And it's not necessarily just having different viewpoints. It's like, from my perspective, people really kind of un, unmasking themselves in different ways that I've been quite surprised by, mm -hmm. to be honest, you know, without passing judgment. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's, and I think because we're all stuck in the house, we're all on social media more. So we're all in the news feed and receiving a stimulus constant that's been mediated by so many variables. What kind of mood you're in, who shared the content, what their spin on it was before it got to you, mm -hmm. the distance bef between the event that's happened and the camera that filmed it, all the Chinese whispers in between, all the other people who told the reporter what was going on. Mm -hmm. By the time it gets to you, <laughs> the truth's been cut with so many different things and then it's got to go into your head and be cut with all your crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I just, without becoming dead nihilistic about it, I'm very cautious about really grasping tightly on an idea of what the truth is or what is actually going on. I know some basic stuff. I've got some basic assumptions. 
I think there's a virus out there that's quite dangerous. I think it's probably better. We're in lockdown, though maybe it won't be. Who knows? Yeah, totally, um, totally. You know what I mean? Like it's these are crazy. the assumptions. These are the assumptions I'm working off. But I just, I just, I had to kind of. It was yesterday. Every few weeks, I sometimes I just deactivate my Facebook. I just need a break from it, you know. Mate, I, do you know what? I know plenty of people doing it at the moment because I think, you know, even as humans, I don't really think we're meant to, like, go through all those emotions that you do when you scroll through your newsfeed, you know, because one minute you're happy, you know, it's a cute wee dog and all that. The next minute, it's somebody ranting on about something. The third minute, it's some horrendous video that's making you pure upset and that. Then you learn about something, you know. It's just like, it's too Bye. much information. It's bombarding us. And as you say, by the time it actually gets to you, don't really know everything behind it. So I think Aye. I think one of the main things you need to do when you look at people that do post on social media and stuff is just take it with a pinch of salt half the time. Aye. People take it far too serious and there's so much ego wrapped up in it. When it comes to opinions and things, it's like, how are we going to utilize it in a way that we can actually, even if you're, a, you know, because you see it sometimes people that are wrong and they'll go, do you know what? Hands up. Sorry, man. I probably, do you know what? I've t- you've just taught me a lesson. How, how can we be more humble like that? Because you just don't see enough of that. I uh, it's 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 just it kind of I think social media like a lot of modern life produces quite perverse incentives. You know what I mean? So on one hand it's supposed to connect us, but on the other hand we divide more the more people use it, and then we stay within our groups. You know, or, or like I've always prided myself in. I like to know what other people think. You know, so if I follow someone, it's not necessarily just because. It's not because necessarily I agree with them or I like even like them. Uh, it's because it's important to me as a person to understand what the range of views are out there in the world that I live in so that I can take decisions about how I think and how I behave. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, actually, you've got to get to a point where you go, right, okay, I've seen enough at that point of view. You know, I think I understand what that particular viewpoint is and I'm not going to expose myself anymore because it's disturbing me in some way uh, or I'm being drawn in or you know I just you just have to take decisions and then obviously the minute you do that there's a risk then that you're 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 locking yourself in the echo chamber you know but it's a constant struggle between protecting your own mind state and emotional health and also being exposed to you know the vastness of of viewpoints that exist so it's just I think I think in lockdown it's all right to 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 suspend the critical thinking in terms of I need to know what's going on and da, 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 and just put your mental health as a priority because this is an unnatural way to live. This is unnatural as as a parent with two young children. This is an unnatural way to raise children. Believe me, and I'm grateful for all the parental advice that I get. But I've actually, we've actually achieved something in lockdown, which is no parent can give us advice about how to do what we are currently doing because no parent has done it. No. Not even during the war. You know what I mean? Like, kids are supposed to be outside. You're supposed to be doing things. They're supposed to go and see grandparents. There's lots of different influences in their life, lots of different emotional attachments that they get to explore, lots of physical running about, lots of fresh air to breathe. It's taken me 10 weeks just to get my kids back on a normal sleeping pattern. You know what I mean? Like, they started staying up till, like, half 11 at night, and it just got to a point where I had half an hour to myself. Yeah. And and that's not healthy for me. That's you know, not, that's not. Nah, so, so it's hard work. It's been hard work. You know, my missus is a bit more relaxed about those kind of things. She doesn't really see the distinction between day and night. She can work any time. She's, she's cool. That, that's cool for her. It's not cool for me, you know. I, I need to know when my day's ending. I need to know when when can I expect to indulge myself with something that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I play a computer game or read a book or um, or have a phone call with a friend in recovery or something like that. Yeah. So, like, just I, I, I really worry for people who are dealing with... I really worry for people whose the fundamentals of their household aren't as sound as I was... You know, Absolutely. we've got plenty of money. We've got plenty of support. Um, we don't have anybody in active addiction in the household. We don't have anybody in the household who behaves abusively. Uh, we all have our moments, but nobody in this house lives in fear of somebody else's behaviour. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of other people, they don't have that luxury and lockdown, I think, will produce extremes in behaviour, whether it's extremes in addictions and extremes in abusive stuff. And so I had gratitude and all that, but even with us, with the fundamentals being cool, whoof, <laughs> heavy duty, mate, you know? It just, it just shows you, done it, though, is like, you know, as you say, you've got those kind of basics met. Um, mm. But really, life is more than just that, and it's not black right. and white, you know. And that, and that, and the thing is, thank, thank God, you've got all, all your ducks in order, and everything's all right on that side. But you're right; there are people face. I guess it's why we're seeing the craziness in the world right now. They've been cooped up right. for so long, and and you know, people are choking to get out. Really, um, right. what about uh, creatively? What's been happening there? Have you? Because I know I've been in and out of dips. And I know the yeah. first few weeks, I was like right down the rabbit hole, investigating the critical thing and all that. Mm. And then I started to realize again, I was like, you know what? This is consuming me. I'm becoming the content I'm watching. I need to chill aye, out again. Aye. I need to chill out again. Just start, get back into a positive mindset mm. and getting creative. In the last few weeks, that has been the case. So what about you? Because I, I know every creative person we've spoken to in the podcast, it's been a total mixed bag. I, I've I, I've been very much at the pre-contemplation stage of being creative. <laughs> I've I've had lots of inspiration. I've had I've 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 I've, I've been tinkering with structuring issues around projects that I'm working on, and that and and and, and my projects usually benefit whatever they are writing music. They usually benefit if you're being left to cook for a while, which is not always great if you have a deadline or or you want to get something wrapped up for a certain time. But I always find that my project just improves the longer I take to, to work on it. Um, so, you know, fixing structuring issues, freshening things up a bit. Um, I, 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 I've been, that, 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 a lot of that occurs in the mind, you know, when you're just thinking things through. When I actually sit down to write, though, it's just, you know, the practicalities of writing when you have two young children trapped in the house for 14 hours a day. <laughs> I have to take a decision as a father that um, I can either be miserable because being interrupted when I'm trying to focus produces in me a, a stinking mind state, which is akin to being choking for a fag and not being able to get your hands on one. And any smokers out there or former smokers will know what I mean. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost an impulse to rage. You know, I wouldn't act out on it but I'm aware that it's there. Mm -hmm. If I'm thinking and I'm interrupted, it's involuntary how I respond internally, emotionally, you know what I mean? And I can't kind of risk putting myself in that mindset. It's not worth it. So I just decided very early on, within a week, um, that my wife, she had other things that she had to do because normally she's doing most of the childcare. She, she's she's having to drop kids off and do all that. So me being at home has actually kind of liberated her in a way um, to do more than she might otherwise be able to do. That's great. And so I try to kind of see that I could be useful in that sense. And don't get me wrong, some days I was more willing than others. The days where I'm, I'm feeling inspired or the days where I just want to lie down and get asleep or whatever, um, you know, it's tense. But ultimately, I thought this is, this is what my function in the lockdown will be. If an opportunity comes up, sometimes to do a wee couple of hours here or there, or maybe the lockdown eases and, and, and people can go out for a wee while, cool. But I just decided I wasn't going to try and work, and also that, that, um, that I wasn't going to beat myself up about that and just having to put people in the picture who are waiting on me, finishing things and all that, that this is a situation where family, recovery health that all comes first and and everything else comes second i love that i love that you know i think because compartmentalizing it and then just allocating time or not is so important because if you can't if you go on about it and sort of half arse it and go well do you know what? i'm going to try and do a wee bit of work here and there the fact that you've made the decision you're just like that do you know what i'm not going to touch it it gives your brain more space to be the father, to be the brother, to be the husband, Aye. you know, and, and do those jobs right because they, they are the most important things because you do get wrapped up in your career throughout your life. But, one, you know, one day it will be gone and, and you want the people around you, don't you? And it's like, 
it's, 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 and, and see when you're talking about the, <laughs> like I'm the exact same when I'm in the zone try to think interruption man you could just fly off the handle and oh, then, you aye, do, aye. And then I, I'll sit and assess and go why am I speaking to my, my mate like that or my mom like that or, or mm. whoever it may be and I'm like you know and that I think that's human nature when you want to do something well and you feel like you know I don't know mm. but that's so important to actually hone into that and go, do you know what? I'm not going to let that happen. Uh, I find when I'm, when I'm kind of like 80% of my creativity is drilling down to find the fucking oil, right? <laughs> and then I find the oil, the drill is in, I'm extracting it. I'm extracting the good stuff, right? After hundreds of thousands of words of just drilling. Uh, it's just the thought might actually just evaporate and I'll never get it back. When that's happening, where this stuff is coming from, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I couldn't explain it, but it's got to be captured as it's emerging in my mind. Yes. Otherwise, I could go back and try and rewrite it. I can try and remember what it was or a sense of it, but there's something about the rhythm, the ease of access to the language, the mm-hmm. emotional resonance of it, coupled with the the general kind of shape of the thing that just all comes together. It just coheres in a way that, you know, only happens 20% of the time when I'm writing, right? Mm -hmm. Like people might think I'm a decent writer, but if they read the stuff that gets tossed out or the stuff before it gets edited, they would be like, "Ah, this cunt is fucking off his nut. Do you know what I mean? This cunt is absolutely fucking wild, man. Like off his fucking tits. So if I'm getting bothered when I've spent that long drilling down and then it's a fucking, can I do it? Can I have black current? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the dual frustration of being interrupted and being interrupted for something that to you seems so unimportant. Yeah. You know, to a wee four-year-old guy, it's comfort. He sits with his wee bottle. He's playing Sonic the Hedgehog. It's all part of his thing, you know. Daddy I mean? makes it best. It. I just like, oh, not even that. You know, I'm lucky if I don't get told I'm no day and written right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't it matter if you're the one getting up in the middle of the night. The kids will tell you they don't want you. They want mummy, you know. And some mm-hmm. days you can be more humorless about that than others. You would be surprised how sensitive you can be to the words of a small child, even though you know, one, they don't mean it and buy it. And two, they are, they're just being completely honest because they don't know how to be deceptive. There's no filter. They're too young. So they're just like, ah, I don't like you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> some days you're like, ah, no bother me, man. I don't like you either. And some days you're like, ah, you go, you're going a wee sulk. Do you know what I mean? You're going oh, a wee sulk. Why did my like son me. say that to me? Ah, yeah, exactly. Well, how, how do you manage that then? It's just one of these things you just get used to. You need to deal with it because that's, uh, that is kids. And honestly, to be honest, that is the thing, the key thing well, you my, want from a child, isn't it? I, you got to look at it like this. My, kid is so, my kids are so confident, they tell me they don't like me, right? <laughs> my kids are so in tune with their emotion. They'll tell me when they're angry at me. They'll tell me when they're sad. And my daughter is so confident. She's only two and a half. And she has now started saying, not just, Daddy, you hit me, right? This is if she falls and you don't catch her, or if she runs into you or something. she say, Daddy, you hit me. But now she says, Daddy, you hit me again. <laughs> so it's a double-layered lie, right? In her mind, what's happening, like she's been restrained in some way or restricted, you know, you're lifting her down from something, or you're, you're kind of, you're hurrying her down a set of stairs and you're holding her and... Things like that, parents will know the deal. Sometimes you've got to kind of hurry them up a wee bit, right? When I do that with my daughter, and sometimes when I don't even physically touch her, uh, she said say, Dad, Daddy, you hit me again. Like, no, I would rather my kids were confident enough to lie in my face like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah conf- confident enough to say that they don't like me because I, rem- I don't remember feeling as confident to speak to my, one of my parents like that. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? When I was a kid, it was a different story. You know what I mean? So so you've got to kind of look at the positives. And I think like every parent goes through it. You know, every, every child is different. Everybody deals with different things. But ultimately, what I'm aiming for is children to be expressive about how they feel, to feel confident, 
to to have a language to describe their emotions mm -hmm. and to use it, even if they're not always being accurate, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 so that means they're gonna be cheeky. Mm -hmm. That means they're gonna push boundaries, and that means they're gonna say things that are insensitive, even though they're just kids, they yeah. can say things that are insensitive mm -hmm. for you as an adult. You might mm -hmm. just go like that. Oof, do you know yeah. what I mean? That was cold, mate. That was five in the morning, son. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that was cold. <laughs> it sounds like a couple of battle rappers are brewing there, man. A couple of... Aye, uh, something, mate. Do you know what I mean? Something. We'll see. Well, right, so then, so projects-wise, I mean, like, have you, cause have you, did you not do something during the lockdown, like BBC-wise, some debates and things I like did, that? I, I pro probably have done a couple of appearances here and there. Um, I mean, even this I, podcast, I, you're, you're been, doing some stuff, but not much. Aye, aye, I've been doing, um, I've been doing, uh, I'm, I'm involved in a few, I don't know, I just kind of thought I'll, I'll, I'll use some of my time to get involved in some more kind of local stuff, um, i.e. it's not necessarily mainstream media or book stuff and that. So mm -hmm. um, I try to do a few podcasts here and there. I try to do, I'm involved in this thing called Hidden Voices, which is a project that's been developed in, uh, I think it's in it's either Low Moss or HMP Edinburgh. Basically, it's people in prison writing poetry and uh, every week the 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 people judging it get a like a, a tranche of poetry they read through they score it and then they, the winners get announced um so that i'm doing now i've got a load of poetry to read for wednesday um Excellent. doing a couple of kind of panel discussions one with the Scot scottish file introduction unit um and uh, which is just about what what does what does how, what is the picture that's emerging or what life is like after these events mm -hmm. and how does that impact on, you know, vulnerable groups or people that are running out of the criminal justice system who have usually got a load of other, a carousel of other issues ongoing. Um, so just stuff like that. It's surprisingly hard, actually. I've found normally I'm quite on top of my diary and all that, but I think it's like a muscle almost. The longer you don't look at it, the 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 weirder it is when you actually make an arrangement with yeah. somebody because you just think it's logged in my head, but then you forget about it. And like, I, 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 the other day was the first day in ages where I had to kind of write out my to-do list because I had actually mentally lost track of a bunch of wee things that, you no know, ad many things like filling out feedback form for somebody, uh, paying two people who did a bit of work for me, um, wee stupid things. You know, but then eventually you just kind of... Well, they compile. You don't realise that's actually running in the background and uh, your kind of CPU draining you a wee bit, you know, and then it's like once you actually deal with that stuff, you're like, oh, that's what was up with me, you know, that's Control why I was feeling agitated. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that's it. No, it is because there are so many things going on and it's like, it is important to take a note of it because it can slip out and it's interesting to say about the muscle thing because if you kind of lack on the emails and the diary management and stuff because things just haven't been coming through as fast, then you mm. can get lax in other ways. And I even just found that, as I was saying earlier, like in terms of what I was looking up on and I was like, you know what, I need to switch this back up, get the positive mind going and, mm. you know, and look at and research the right things and what about eating wise? Have you have you have you delved back into the cooking game? Pretty because good. I've been I've, cooking I've, so much. I've um I've I mean I've not been cooking as much. We we have been phoning food in a lot. Um but I have been actually eating better or been more mindful because I can see the risk of me just like regaining a lot of weight that I managed to lose over the last few years because I've been training more. And I've not been able to get into the gym. I've got some dumbbells and stuff. I ordered some stuff. It's taken ages to come through. So basically, I just decided I was going to just focus on running, um, which I've not done for a couple of years. Uh, I'm still smoking, so I've already hit the glass ceiling. I like how long I can run for before I just need to stop, which is frustrating because I used to be able to go a lot longer, you know, just keeping running and not have to walk like a quarter of the way back. Yeah. But actually, like, bit. The good thing about running is you see the results straight away. You feel the results straight away um, because you get the mental lift. 
you get the it regulates your appetite it helps with your sleep um and actually if you're running as well as keeping track of what you're eating um then then you you can start to lose weight pretty quickly mm-hmm. you know like sometimes this is the mental block that people have and i have as well when it comes to like food so food for most people it's not just a practical thing that you need to do it's an emotional experience so there's so many places and things that happen that you associate with food like sitting down at night and watching something on the telly you like to do that with your food no increasingly youtube is the thing people will be cooking while youtube is on they will be sitting down it was like sitting down to watch emmerdale or something you know when you're a wee guy your grannies uh, at dinner time and and so it's difficult to try and imagine changing eating habits in a time where we're all under emotional stress the, the, the instinct is to just go fuck it i'll deal with it later but i think those of us that are a certain age i'm 36 like i can't afford that can i slip up at this point because it's harder to clock it back well it's untraining you know? isn't it it's like it's so it's like once you hit a certain age it, it, it's hard to train new things into you so if Aye, you've got hard, a routine there keep it going <laughs> It's, it's hard metabolically, right? So just your mm-hmm. physical nature changes. Like, I, I, I used to just, like, I was I was like that. I was, like, stick thin until I was about 26, right? Everybody I seen who wasn't in the music scene, when they saw me, they asked me if I was all right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, all I ate was chippies and sweeties and drank Buckfast and took pills and somehow did not gain any weight whatsoever. And everybody that age, but living like that, thinks, well, I'm, I'm fucking, I've, I've struck gold here, do you know what I mean? And then see when she kicked 30s door down, metabolism's like that. Do you know what, actually, uh, there are consequences now, uh, and you are actually just a fat, alky drug addict. <laughs> Deal with that, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, oh, shit. So it's like, at 36, I'm just like, um, I don't beat myself up for eating what I want. It's like, see if you're going to get a takeaway, you don't need to get everything. Do you know what I mean? So, like, say I get a curry, I only eat half the curry. Do you know what I mean? And I'll put the other half away. Um, sometimes, and I know maybe it's no, it's a bit more wasteful than it would need to be, but often I find that I'm hungry for a bag of chips, a small bag of chips, and then I actually just have a handful of the chips. And I'm satiated, I've, I've satisfied that desire, whatever it is I'm looking for. So, like, even if you are going to indulge, like, you don't have to go the full whack. You don't have to just go fuck it. So, the, la- the last, uh, there was two weeks where I didn't get out for a run because I was really no well. Um, I ended up just being a chest infection, but it was quite nasty. And I couldn't get out and run. And, uh, and I kind of let the, uh, sort of, press down the accelerator pedal on, on eating the crap. Do you know what I mean? And that's just what I had to do to get through that period. But I've sort of, I've done that so many times now that when it gets to the point where I know I need to get my shit together, too I can do, it pretty quick, can do it pretty quickly, you know, rather than letting it go on for months and months. Um, and because I've got a fundamental baseline of, of fitness now, then I know, I know the strategies, you know what I mean? So, um, even though I have been eating a lot of takeaway, and I'm sure a lot of other people have, uh, I've, I've still been managing to keep on track with all my other stuff. Good, mate. Good. It's like, I mean, I, it's just one of these moments. There's, you know, at certain times, there's not been much more to do other than eat or, like, you know, cook something. And um, I've certainly been honing my, my skills again in the, in the kitchen, man, and I've, I've been loving it, you know. And it's, it's just, I think it's an, it's an important time to, hone into that because I think when we come out the back of this, there's going to be a lot of local businesses and cafes and stuff that, that need a, that need a hand, you know, I think, I think the big corporates, they'll be fine, you know? So I think, uh, I think it's quite good to hone back into a bit of sort of, you know, cooking and then going back in and just appreciating the kind of local cooking and things like that. Again, I want to see coffee, a- man. That's what I miss. I miss, I miss the sort of coffee that you cannot make at home. It just doesn't matter if you've got a cafetiere. It doesn't matter if you've got an actual espresso machine. Like, 
there's a certain type of coffee that can only be made by one of those massive big fucking things that look like a locomotive. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where you've got the thing in there and then the and da 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 and then the milk and then you steam it and it's like it's proper coffee. Yeah. And I miss that. You know, one thing I have noticed, and I wonder if other people listening might identify with this. Unless, of course, you're just getting fucking box of Haribo delivered directly into your face every day. Um, see, because we're not outside. Yeah. See, because we're not outside. See, because we're not in and out of shops. We're not walking up and down the street. We're not confronted by the usual frequency of temptation. Consumerism. So even, even if we are getting, you know, getting the share bags of toffee crisps in or whatever, right? You're still real. You're still eating relatively less crap than you otherwise would be. Because if you're eating crap, you're eating crap, and that includes if you're out on the bus. That includes if you're out on a train. That includes if you're at your work. If you're not doing these things and you're just eating some crap at night or grazing on crap in your house throughout the day, you're still kind of eating less crap. Like I've noticed that. You know, I've spent less money than I otherwise would. I'm not travelling anywhere. I'm no. You know, I'm no drinking three or four coffees, you know, Greg, Starbucks, Costa, a nice wee local place, whatever, uh, you know, you're saving a 10 or 20, 30 quid sometimes throughout the course of a day because you're just no gone contactless for everything, do you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. W.H. Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, I, I have noticed actually that lifestyle-wise, it's, it's, it's been moderately easier as much as I'm no got to the gym. Um, just because you're not confronted by pictures of fudge donuts uh, every nice, time you turn man. around the corner. It's nice. It's, it's nice to just, I think about other things for a minute instead of just being bombarded. I always, I always remember like one of the just like, like sort of like gentrification in all these coffee shops and places. I remember being in St. Andrews going there and it was this ancient town cobble streets and I was like I can't believe this is so historic for golf and all that and then there, there, there's a Greg's there's a Starbucks there's an H&M and I was like why, uh, yeah. why have they why have they allowed this in here you know so it is quite nice for a change just to just be bombarded with your own stuff for a change aye definitely mate definitely and I think we have been lucky apart from a few days here and there wow it's been nice weather Forever, sunny man. Hot, even on a day the day where it's quite overcast, it's warm enough, and I'd, I'd say that that offsets the negative aspects. I mean, there's almost nothing that isn't improved in a minor way by it being a nice day outside. Well, you know it's, just, I mean? it's, it's scientifically proven as well, it's good for us, you know what I mean? So, Aye. and we do have such a lack of it in the UK, hence a lot of the problems. So, actually, Aye. maybe maybe this will spike some good, uh, some good positive reactions, you know what I mean. Fingers crossed. Well, look, mate, I think, you know, we, we could we could probably just keep going, but I think that's a, that's a good place to wrap it up. Loads of, you know, positive stuff and just things for people to try and focus on in a different type of way. And, um, and then, well, actually, one, one thing I have been asking everybody we've had on, which I will ask you, um, which is the last question, and have you got a set or a rapper or a something on YouTube for people to watch, just something a wee bit different. Usually people recommend like a DJ set, so I'm looking for something a wee bit different from yourself. What's something that oh, people can check out? Interesting. Um, I mean, I would just go and check out my, my I think my, my most recent video. It's called Scotland Today, Loki Scottish Rapper, Scotland Today. It's I love on that. YouTube. Love that track. Um, that's the most recent thing I've done. I've got a couple of other things coming out, with, with, which is me featuring on other artists, well, but it's not yet. Yep. Check out Abruptly, actually, by Astronomic. That's got me, Empress, a bunch of MCs locally, and it's a pure bang and tune. Check that out as well. Class, mate, class. Well, look, mate, absolute joy to have you back on. Really appreciate your time. Um, and no black current just during the whole podcast. That that <laughs> um, they must be sleeping. <laughs> they must be somebody <laughs> done out their, their, their daily walk. Um, but no, I do I do really appreciate it, mate. And um, you know, guys as well, thanks for, for watching Loki, great stuff. I mean, I follow all your stuff on Twitter and that and always love your opinion and, and I love um how able you're able to take a jab at yourself. So guys, mm. definitely go and check out Loki, the Scottish rapper on all platforms, apart from Facebook for a for, for every now and again, just depends on <laughs> depends on that week. And I, and I get that, I totally do. 
Um, so I appreciate it. Remember, subscribe to the channel, guys. Loads of great uh, podcasts and episodes up there. And we've got loads of amazing stuff in the pipeline. So even though it's been a crazy year, hopefully it's going to be quite exciting as well. So Darren, mate, thanks very much. Till next time. Cheers, brother. No problem. Take it easy, bro, right?